What's good, everyone? This your boy, Jay Shaw from the Behind the Bench Network. Shout out to the Bench Crew. Check out our videos. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe. If you already subscribe and you're re-watching some of our old videos, go ahead and press the like button, man. We trying to grow this channel. We trying to get to 1,000 um, members by the end of January going into the new year. We got big things coming in, in 2024. So, you know, just stay tuned. But let's get straight to this game. Now, the Minnesota is the second best team in the NBA. The Lakers is one of the worst teams in the NBA if you really watch them. And if you're just honest with yourself, they don't have no talent. And it's not because they, they don't have talent because that's how they were set up to not have talent. You got to understand the Lakers had a sign eight, nine players this season before the start of the season. So, and then they had to get, they didn't have no cap space to sign good players. So when you, when you're picking players at the bottom of the barrel, you're going to get what you get. Now, a lot of people can't evaluate talent. A lot of people thought all the, the additions was great pickups. I was looking at them with a, with, with, with a what you talking about Willis face, you know, and um, it's starting to show, you know, um, Cam Reddish, hot garbage. And I once believed in Cam Reddish. I felt like if he had a chance, he could play somewhere. His confidence done died. He don't have no more confidence um, in his game. I don't know if he even works on his game. Um, he probably was a player that should have stayed in college three to four years, honestly. Um, Vanderbilt, he's not a good player either. Quentin Woods, he's not good either. Uh, they don't have good players. Even the players that do get run, like Austin Reeves, he's not good defensively. Um, Hurry. He's not good defensively, and he's very streaky. When he got it going, yeah, he he could he could he could give you about eighteen to twenty points, but when he don't, he's gonna give you somewhere under ten points. The team is not good. Um, Kelvin made a video just the other day. If it wasn't for AD being on this team, this Laker team would be one of the worst teams. They'll be down there with San Antonio, Detroit level. Um, Charlotte level of town, you know, just record wise. But let's get to this game, man. It was LeBron's birthday, and the league was doing whatever they could to keep the Lakers in the game and give LeBron a victory on his birthday. But most importantly, versus one of the best teams in the league because they like to give that perception that even though the Lakers are not a good team, the LeBron media would kind of sell it to you when they win, when they, when the league allows them to win these games versus big teams to believe that if they met in the playoffs, the Lakers will be the favorite. Or if, if the Lakers get to the playoffs, they can win any team in the West. And if you really are honest with yourself and if you really are watching these games, the Lakers just don't have it. They're not even good to be a play-in team, people. They're not. And honestly, it's a lot of stuff that some of y'all fans don't see because y'all real casuals or y'all diehard Laker fans or y'all LeBron fans. You know, it's Laker fans out there. They don't mess with LeBron, but they still want their team to win. And I get it. You know, I used to be a Laker fan, but ever since this dude got to the team, everything, the whole culture done, been, it's just, it's just been, it's been terrible. It's not, it's not nothing that you want to witness. It's not, it's not the Laker way. Let me say that. It's not the Laker way. But um, Minnesota played a below, way below their average. 
With that said, what I'm trying to explain, when a good team plays below average, they're giving a shot to a team that's bad. But that team that's bad, they just got to play above average. But what ended up happening tonight, the Lakers played average. So they was not able to balance it out to the point that they was able to pick the victory up. Even though the league did whatever it took to keep the Lakers in the game by non-calls on defense. The Lakers was able to play aggressive style defense, especially Jared Vanderbilt, Cam Reddish, LeBron James. It was a couple plays. LeBron, I just I seen LeBron James literally arm bar a person going out of bounds. But also it was a lot of non-calls like always with LeBron. He literally pushed somebody down going to the basket with his off arm that they don't call. And they're never going to call. LeBron is never going to really have personal fouls on him that he should have. LeBron should be averaging at least four to five fouls a game and possibly be fouling out a, a lot of games just on the offensive end on his drives. Him using his off arm to push defenders down and uh, create space or create contact. That should be called on top of him um, playing bad defense, you know, at times when he's defending. Um, the Lakers didn't really shoot good from the three-point line. Um, they had about 10, I want to say somewhere around 10 turnovers. Minnesota, they turned the ball over, it seemed like. They only, they only had 19, but if you really watched the game, it looked at like Minnesota had 30 turnovers. On top of them, their game plan was attack the basket. Nas Reed had a, I think he scored around 20 points tonight. He had a throwback game when I was watching. It just looked at like old 90s type of playing, 2000s of attacking the basket. We're going to attack you where you're weak at. You know, I'm going I'm to go in, lay the ball up, dunk, half court set. And that's all they did. Um, Mike Conley had a had a good game. I think he finished with 15 points, but I think he got most of his points in the fourth quarter. Anthony Edwards is he's a he's really he could be the best player in the league if he had a a Kobe or a Michael Jordan type of um, work ethic and if he did not like socialize in social media and his homeboys and all that and just focused on the game of basketball Anthony Edwards would, he could be he could, he could be the next Kobe Bryant he could be the next Michael Jordan he's that good it was nobody on the Lakers that was able to stay in front of him, whatever he, when he wanted to go to the basket, he was able to go to the basket. A lot of the times him going to the basket, he would be fouled on his way to the basket and they did not call it. That was almost the storyline of the game. Minnesota's attacking the basket and then, and they're being fouled on the way to the basket or during a shot. And it was nothing called. It was one of the worst officiated games that you would ever see if you just be honest with yourself. And um, the NBA should be embarrassed to have a game like this. Anytime Minnesota will, you know, start trying to pull away, going up by five, six, or seven, here goes some type of bogus call on the other end that sends the Lakers to the free throw line or, um, you know, if a, it, it'll be – Minnesota will have the ball looking to score again, and it'll be some type of bad call. So, it's just one of those things that it was just it was just bad. It was it was really it was just bad to see, man. But 
Minnesota end up pulling it off with, especially in the fourth quarter in the last two minutes with a lot of bad calls, a lot of missed calls. And they was able to squeak out a victory. Um, LeBron shot a three. He said his foot was on the line. It was very close. It could have been a three, could have been a two. Um, I couldn't really tell. I don't think even with the with the monitor, they was able to tell. Um, but other than that, Minnesota won the game. Lakers fall another one. They got a stretch of home games coming, and we're going to see what the Lakers is made of because they got some tough teams that they got to play against. So it's going to either get real bad or it's going to, you know, the Lakers is going to play 500 ball in the next couple games. Until then, I'm out. So this is your boy, Jay Shard, once again. Check out all our videos. Subscribe, like, and until then, this is the Behind the Bench Sports Network. I'm out.